folks, and welcome to Garbage Theater Season 6. Da 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 da! Holy shit. Not only Season 6, but our third anniversary of Garbage Theater. Tonight. Huh. <laughs> it's incredible. Huh. Incredible. To think that uh, my daughter will never have known a time where I wasn't doing this <laughs> stupid podcast. <laughs> Oh my god. Three years ago tonight, <laughs> we released I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. Me and Blake with a, 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 a shallow, hollow idea of a, what we want to do for a podcast uh, being released into an already oversaturated market of bad movie podcasts. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Starting to reevaluate life choices right now. Yep. yep. What could I, what else could I have done in three years? <laughs> Probably could have learned to play the piano. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Uh, learn some uh, Mandarin. Ballroom, ballroom dance. Become a supervillain. Oh, you just got a deeper insight into Godfrey Ho movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whew, thank God. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three but years. I've been it doesn't feel like fight. three years. Yeah, I've been keeping up the good fight of keeping Neil Breen out of the mainstream as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this will be the year. I'm doing the Lord's work. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, to celebrate our three-year anniversary, we wanted to go ahead and give out to you, the listeners, some of our top three favorite episodes that we've done. So if you're new and you're just starting out, you have uh, some reference to go back and listen to some highlights. Uh, I'll go first. I want to say some of my three favorites. It doesn't have to be your top three. Just three of your your favorite ones we've ever done. I got to say Glimmer Man is up there. (laughs) I think of all of our Steven Seagal movie episodes, I think that one's the highlight. Okay. It's I a think, solid one. I think it's we, a solid one. Yeah, it was the first it was the it was the first one with all three of us on it. And that's right. That was I my think, Seagal cherry. Yes, it was. <laughs> and it's just got some quality stuff in there. <laughs> uh I also really liked uh Rock and Roll Nightmare. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun episode. <laughs> the movie, not so much, but the episode we recorded is pretty great because that movie just became more and more insane as it went. And so did we. (laughs) Yeah, true. And also, I was a fan of Bloodbeat because of how dialed in we all were and we were all on the same page with what that woman looked like. Yes. (laughs) That's definitely a classic moment. Yes. (laughs) I definitely think somebody should get like, we should make like a a Venn diagram of like (laughs) what we were all saying. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Go listen to the Bloodbeat episode. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll hear that, that golden moment. Right. <laughs> I'll go next because John's a filthy loser from the last season. So yep. yep. I'll go last. Uh, mine, which it's, it's surprisingly Seagal heavy. <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> the heavy being the operable term, you know? Uh, <laughs> Sniper, special ops, <laughs> because that's where we found out that holy shit, we need more Seagal. Yes, that's true. Uh, and and the second one is Asian Connection, <laughs> because that's where it went off the rails. Which once again, if you haven't listened to it, somehow we connected uh, Mongolians and Falcons and Harry Carey and baseball, like everything, kind of. <laughs> All that mixed into Steven Seagal somehow. Yeah, most of the most of the Seagal lore was born uh, in yeah. that episode. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, and my third was born into Mafia because <laughs> <laughs> I think we had so much fun talking about it. Yeah, and we came up with new stereotypes. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was pretty good. And then I have I kind of have like three in a. Uh, a third of a pick it's not even a third maybe like an eighth or a sixteenth of a pick just the first 15 minutes of uh, go with Le Flo is good enough no god <laughs> he's just gonna, he'll just rub it in your face 
forever. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be like a that, short that's a short listen, folks. Oh yeah. Once you once you get the punchline, you can stop listening after that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it only takes a few minutes. Terrible. But yeah, the, oh my uh, God. As, as far as the Born to Mafia, that was also when I had my uh, real life uh, usual suspects moment when I realized what that pun meant. <laughs> <laughs> I still think yeah. that's head, that's headcanon. That's uh, <laughs> that's not in the context of the movie. But, yeah, I but think sure. it is. <laughs> That's too, yeah, also it's too in clever. Born into mafia it's too clever like, to be in that movie. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Born into Mafia was also like when I didn't even realize the big plot twist of the movie until y'all told me. That's uh, yeah. That was also <laughs> a, a, another great classic garbage theater moment. Yeah. Blake realizes was, the entire movie was a lie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good oh, stuff. Man. Good stuff. John. All right, yeah, I got a, I got a Buffalo Rider here at the top. <laughs> Great episode. It was. Spawned an award. Lots of hits. Oh, yeah, yep. Goddamn um, Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a classic one right there. Um, my, my next one is Elves. <laughs> really enjoyed yeah. Elves. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad we get to see more Dan Haggerty. <laughs> Well, a, a, him is great. a tiny bit more Dan Haggerty. <laughs> a tiny, tiny bit of old ass Dan Haggerty. Um, mm. But that movie is so insane. Um, just was a blast to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Street Trash yeah. is oh, another yeah. one of my top. Ones I almost put like, Street ta- Trash in there. Dude, because like uh, we don't get to gush very often. Yeah, <laughs> we spent the movie. You know, we talked about the movie just loving it. Yeah, uh, and that just doesn't happen often. So no, we, uh, I don't think we had much bad to say about that. Not movie. really. No. <laughs> if you want to hear us happy, listen yeah. to Street Trash. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the happiest you'll hear us. I can watch that supermarket scene over and over and so laugh my ass off every time. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh man! Uh, no, that was that was a fun trip down memory lane. It was. Uh, oh, we'd also we'd love it if uh, some listeners wanted to share some of their favorite episodes with us. Um, let us know on uh, any of our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Yes. What uh, some of your favorite episodes were. We'd be very interested to hear that. Yes. Can, can I kind of go off the rails and say something about our listeners? I promise it won't be derogatory. Oh Here we go. You're ready <laughs> no. to hack off another chunk of people that listen to no, us. No, not at all. I was just going to say I didn't realize like us having technical problems with a couple episodes would bring out – like. <laughs> Like, so we didn't realize that we had so many listeners until something got fucked up. (laughs) And then everybody, like, was wanting our fucked up shit. Our fans are very quiet until something goes catastrophically wrong. And then they're out for blood. Right. (laughs) Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I was happy. I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. It was like holy shit, they do exist. They wanted that Star Wars episode. Yeah. And they still want go <laughs> and they still want Ghost Shark. And I'm going to have an announcement about Ghost Shark at the end of the, of this episode. So. And also I want to mention we we briefly talked about it before we started recording, but speaking of technical difficulties, <laughs> uh I messed up. I have my the wrong computer and this computer if it does decide to start messing up during the recording, I have to blow into the side of it like a Nintendo cartridge for it to work again. <laughs> Starting off season six right. Starting off 2020 right. So all y'all people that like really like when we got technical difficulties, this episode's for you. <laughs> uh, this, this technical difficulty I can edit out though. So I'm not too worried about this one. You're not going to let people listen to me blow into the computer? No, because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Speaking uh, of ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, go on. Uh, the movie we watched? <laughs> we're going to get to that 
first I have to do my PSA about Red Lobster. <laughs> so, Red Lobster, uh, by the way, is not a sponsor. Red Lobster is not a sponsor. They're never going to be a sponsor, especially after what I got to say about them. If they send us paperwork, <laughs> we're going to tell them to shove it up their ass. And I, I don't want them as a sponsor because I almost died from food poisoning over the weekend from goddamn Red Lobster. The sons of bitches. And before he starts on his rant, let me remind everybody that Chase started his life as a Cajun. I don't know what happened <laughs> since then, but him eating that Red Lobster negates any Cajun blood he has in him. What am I supposed to do? Uh, if not I eat that Red Lobster. Oh, just not eat seafood ever? You realize what happens at Red Lobsters in Louisiana? <laughs> Nothing. They go out of business. That's in Louisiana. <laughs> I understand that. No, over here, the Red Lobster over here, they got this brand new special. Hey, have you ever wanted to lay on the bathroom floor, spraying out of both ends, twirling around like some kind of demented, smelly firecracker? Well, come on down <laughs> to Red Lobster and have an old-fashioned Texas crab boil. You'll be wishing for the sweet embrace of death in no time. That's what it was, a Texas <laughs> crab boil? It was, it's the old-fashioned Texas crab boil. Well, that should have tipped you off right there. It's old-fashioned. It's been Dude. sitting around for 30 years. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I can remember a time when, like, the Red Lobster was, like, the place that your parents went to on, like, and left your ass at home with the babysitter. It was, it was like, a more, like, <laughs> it, it wasn't the soup kitchen that it is now. And <laughs> yeah. you go in there, and there's not a person under, under 80 in the entire place. And if one of those people ate what I ate, they would have fucking died. They may have. So, fuck you, Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> For the worst night of my life. Ooh. I'm glad we added something else to our boycott list. <laughs> Red Lobster fans and Red Lobster CEOs, whoever the hell that asshole is. Yeah. God damn it. By the way, Red Lobster, if you want to sponsor us, we will take a sponsorship. I think I lost 10 pounds in, in 12 hours. Well, there you go. Hey, so congratulations. That's, yeah. not, that's great. That's not how you're supposed to do it. New year, new me. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. Look, I think that's a small price to pay for, for getting healthy. <laughs> man, they, uh, Chase is out here doing it, man. Slimming down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, go eat some rancid shrimp in a gray sauce. At Red Lobster. I, my plan is more of what I'm going down the tapeworm route, I think. <laughs> yeah, I got to get some like um, some tapeworms, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They probably have those at Red Lobster, too. I want to put them past them. <laughs> Just swimming around in the tank next I'm, to the lobsters. I'm done. I'm done with Red Lobster. I think I'm going to go down the, right, the, go down the route of, uh, you know, like less carbs and black magic. Like That might... <laughs> That yeah. Yeah. Uh, I certainly can't do it on my own. <laughs> Why did this turn into a, a real New Year's? No, what? None of us are doing that, right? Nobody's doing nothing for New Year's. Yeah, fuck that. No, it's mine's just... mine's got nothing to do with New Year's. It's doctor ordered. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you're just all messed up. <laughs> all those years of being a poon hound have caught up to you, huh, John. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that Poon had so many <laughs> calories? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> let's... <laughs> to the topic at hand, Axe Giant. Well, y you gotta admit, Joe Estevez really seems to love what he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he put 110% into this performance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping one of the questions is it how many times did he say whack in this movie? <laughs> I thought about it, but no. How many whacks are on the cutting room floor? <laughs> but but I, I also must say, I really would have rather seen Dan Haggerty in the Meeks role and Joe Estevez in the, the Foreman Bill role. Because I wanted more Dan Haggerty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you got him in the movie, use him. Yeah. He's too Instead, old. he was just a throwaway, like, he's got to take a shit joke, and then he was dead. Yeah. Too old. 
That's how old, does anybody, did anybody look up how old he actually was when they shot this? Yeah, I did. Uh, in March of that year, he turned 173. <laughs> <laughs> He's older than Paul Bunyan. <laughs> 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 he actually he actually died on set. They ritualistically killed him on on set. They they filmed it. That's how that that happened. <laughs> the babe's bones was haggard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, pressing on. We open on the snowy frontier, and Dan Haggerty <laughs> stumbles into a simpler time of 1894. Uh. And other than the one woman that we see with the old timey bonnet on, nothing about this scene is really screaming 1894. No, including the door that had a master lock on. <laughs> <laughs> like they're all just wearing like khakis and flannel. And I guess they had that back then, but it just it's not it's not doing it for me. Yeah. It looked too new. Like everything was I don't yeah. know, it looked like you couldn't tell what time period you're in, you know? No, not at all. Like, I just, I watched uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers over the weekend, and this didn't look anything like that. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Is that one of them uh, polygamy shows on TLC? <laughs> <laughs> oh, big time. Okay, got it. <laughs> Which, by the way, the way this was shot, like the, the woman with the bond and everything, it could have just been a religious cult in the woods in present time. You wouldn't have known the difference. That's true. They they could have villaged our ass. Yeah. <laughs> then something interesting might have happened. <laughs> Shucks. Uh, so old Dan is he schools a youngin about how the future of this great country is going to be home ownership. You'll be able to look out your window <laughs> right into your neighbor's house and see him sitting on the commode. What a great time it'll be. So what Dan, a, what a profit. <laughs> Having shelter. That's the future, Sonny. <laughs> yeah. No more living in tree stumps for us. <laughs> so, Dan. When we have our old fashioned Texas uh, oh. crab whatever, we're going to do it under a roof. <laughs> the old fashioned Texas crab whatever. That might as well be what it's called. So, <laughs> Dan S. Elmer, the cook, when dinner's going to. Wait, gonna wait, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> All the little tiny gut biome and Chase's stomach all at one time said, shoot the hole, Luke. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's pretty much how it went down. I kind of yeah. felt like the Death Star right then and there. You gotta find no. Chase's flaw. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right, sorry, continue with the movie. So Dan asked Elmer the cook, when dinner will be ready. Number says, chow's ready now. And word refers to the big whole goddamn cow on the spit. It's still got big <laughs> chunks of hair on the goddamn... There's, there's no fire under it at all. Well, no, <laughs> not to mention it's clearly like paper mache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, the effect's bad. But I mean, this... It was, it was cold roasted, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> it was snow roasted. <laughs> That's how they cooked that shrimp that I ate at the Red Goddamn Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan taps it with his finger and licks it. Mm, not bad, Elmer. Not bad at all. He tells Elmer to save him some because he'll be back and he wanders out into the woods. And Elmer and the youngin are joking about Dan having to take care of another log jam because of his squirrel bowels. <laughs> this Haggerty be shitting, man. <laughs> They, this they just seems like really unnecessary information. Why, why, why'd they give him this quirk? <laughs> I had no idea. It didn't come back in any way. No, it did I guess not. so. There's a, there's a good enough reason for him to be gone long enough for <laughs> everything to go down. Yeah, I'm sure they had like a storyboard with a whole bunch of options, and I was like, yeah. let's go with take a shit. Yeah, they say <laughs> he can go and put his axe away, or he's got to go take a squirrel shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go with that squirrel shit. Gotta love these turn of the century shit jokes. Uh, <coughs> so the dinner bell is rung on green screen because I guess the triangle refused to work in the snow or some shit. 
there's so much green screen that I screen. This okay. I, was, I was so baffled by so much is the screen a, screen. Is there a term for this kind of movie? Because there's a lot of these on Amazon where the whole thing is just composited, cobbled together green screen shots. Yeah, like the whole freaking yeah. <laughs> it's like a feature length Tim and Eric sketch. <laughs> But like they were, they were in a place though, right? Like they, yes, they yeah, were walking they, around in the snow. There was a building behind them and everything. There's a lot of points in this movie where I was looking for things that may or may not be there. Because there's a few like the later on when we get to the bar, I don't, that big ass lumberjack sure as shit wasn't there. The sign on the bar wasn't there. Right. So they did a lot of that shit. So my wife actually watched this one with me. <laughs> And when they showed the big lumberjack outside the bar, <laughs> and she goes, is that it? I was like, no, that's not. That's <laughs> 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 Paul Bunyan. He just, yeah. he just, it's a movie about him just standing in front of a bar being <laughs> marketing. Yeah. And she and also it, gave me a bunch of shit for the stuff I wrote down that I figured be questions. <laughs> she doesn't know what it's like. That's what I'm saying. Like, you have no re- frame of reference here. And, like, I'd pause the movie and she just, like, when I'd pause it, she'd go, oh. like, <laughs> this is important, lady. This is how you got to do it. Yeah, that's why my wife won't watch these with me anymore, because I pause it every five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dan returns from stinking up the woods to find the whole <laughs> colony massacred. Dead, disembodied corpses are laying everywhere. And he looks on in horror when this goofy looking bastard with an axe jumps out from behind the roast cow. And Dan ru- <laughs> <laughs> He just kind of pops up. This, this shot is so, so ridiculous. So Dan I don't run- think they told the actor that he was going to be on camera at that point. Because <laughs> he looked as shocked as Haggerty did. <laughs> so uh, Dan runs for his life. And he tries to unlock a door to a shed, but can't. So he then just goes into the giant opening right next to it into the shed. I don't know where that door (laughs) was supposed to go. That's where the master lock was, by the way. (laughs) Well, that was the thing. There was a master lock on it. They didn't have the tech to open that in 1894. Somebody from the future came and put this (laughs) lock here. (laughs) So the axe murderer chases him uh, into the shed where there's a giant uh, running circular saw. Uh, Why is it running? I don't know. It's just blast, full blast. I mean, what's powering it? Well, all I, I had to look this up because it was they're all steam powered back then. Okay. So, and I would have to imagine it takes some doing to get that going and to keep yeah, it, it going. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But and this this whole camp is adverse to fire. Yes. <laughs> that's part. Of, that's part of their cult. No fire. No fire. So, Circular Saw's blasting. The two wrestle around for a minute before the axe murderer bites Dan's finger off, causing him to flail backwards and his arm gets sawn off. The killer then lowers Dan into the saw, splitting his head in half in uh, an effect that I kind of thought was not bad. I no, thought I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> Like every everything of gore they had in this movie was dog shit. <laughs> a lot of them were, but there a were lot, more- <laughs> all of them, including what? that one. Are you on, John? Are you on my side here? I, yeah, I'm in a little bit on your side. I think I think uh, of course a little the film bit. Can I think find a little bit of the the crappiness of the special effects uh, was a stylistic choice. Yes. I'm sort of convinced. Well. I ain't got all, that, got all that fancy film learning that you two have. <laughs> and <laughs> that shit was stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying, when he lowers Haggerty into this buzzsaw, they used Haggerty's actual head, and then they just edited it to get split in half with the gore. And to me, because it was only on the screen for a split second, it was enough to register that it looked real enough. Yeah, That's I mean, just me. And again, like we're always... We're always comparing everything to to the other crappy movies we've seen, and I think in other movies of this level of quality, it usually looks worse, or they don't show anything at all. Yes. Um. So 
Yeah, I mean, I was fairly satisfied with, <laughs> with <Yeah>. this effect. <laughs> At least we they always did, compare, yeah, they didn't... We usually compare these things to like Mortal Kombat 2. I'd give this like a Mortal Kombat 4 <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least they didn't skimp on the gore. They did plenty yeah. of it. Okay. They, didn't, they, they didn't wear Rooster Us where they didn't show, you know, 75% of the movie. But they did show a woman get melted by shit. <laughs> that, <laughs> Forgot Not really. Happened. She got shat on, and then later yeah. we saw her skeleton. Ah, you're right. Can't argue yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, then we get the Axe Giant title card, and we cut to the Minnesota State Department of Corrections, where Sergeant Hoke uh, rips down a flyer for the local militia. Wonder if that's going to come back. Uh Miss, Mrs. Why, I feel like they were going for uh, an Uncle Sam thing, but yeah. it was more of a Smokey the Bear thing. <laughs> <on this poster. laughs> they didn't quite nail it. I think it was the hat. Yeah, it was definitely the hat. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Sam Kawamawa Wownanowski. I don't know what her, what her goddamn real name was. She's just Dr. Sam. She yeah. comes out and she's followed by our uh, gang of local delinquents and it's six headed shark attack all over again. I already hate all of them yep. just from seeing them. Uh, <laughs> They're just a bunch of assholes. <laughs> yeah. There's Martin Williams who was convicted of robbery. Trish Gage convicted of three counts of assault on a police officer. Zachary Moore convicted of drug trafficking. And finally the waste of the waste Rosa Villa Contempt of court. <gasps> Dear God. Somebody get this woman off the streets. <laughs> so a car drives up and uh, this man and his uh, daughter get out. And this is Claire Tanner. And she's uh, in for drunk driving with bodily injury. And so Hope goes over the rest of the first offender program that they're all in there for. They file into Hope's van and drive off. Before they drive off, let me, twice people gave this cop shit for having a gun. Yeah. Why are they so worried about this cop having a gun? Uh, like, it was foreign to them. Like, they, they said, do you think you need that? He's a cop. Yeah, but they're just going out on, like, a retreat-type deal, like a scared straight kind of thing. He's a cop. John, John there's, there's, this woods are lousy with Paul Bunyans. <laughs> and then... You find out later that one of the guys asking the cop if he really needs a gun is a fucking cop. <laughs> you try running into a lumberjack in the woods without a gun. You just try it. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be so scared. You'll be shitting out old time crab <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so Hoke asks Dr. Sam if she's ever spent time outdoors. And she says that she's only there to help reform the, reform the offenders. And the delinquents start getting to know each other in the back of the van. And they figure out that Martin is some big internet hacker that stole $12 million from the government. That's a weekend in the woods doing community service crime if I've ever heard of one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get out there and uh, jog a few miles. But he never run got to spend. Run this he never criminality got to, off. He never got to spend it. So that's why it's just like, mm, you naughty fella. Also, <laughs> the the one that we're supposed to feel the most sorry for, to me, had the shittiest crime. Like the drunk driving chick. Fuck yeah. that. It's well, 20. We'll get, like, we'll get into her whole scenario. There's she, Uber and Lyft. You <laughs> fucking bitch. She, she, we, yeah, we get into her whole thing here in a minute. We'll get, we'll get to it. Uh, Hoke fires up a cigar, which Dr. Sam doesn't appreciate. They arrive at the gate that Hoke has to get out and open up. Meanwhile, Joe Estevez sneaks onto the set of the movie. Uh, <laughs> he's just behind a tree, kind of peering out. I want to be in the movie, too. Uh, they and they're like, holy shit, is that Martin Sheen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just Joe Estevez. Ah, no, going. it looks a little weird. <laughs> Not quite him. I was relieved to see that there would be an old coot in the movie. Yes. Uh, I was not, briefly concerned there may not be. But why <laughs> wasn't it Dan Haggerty? He couldn't do the old coot <laughs> thing, I don't think. 
You know what I mean? Like I think he's too he's too he's too chill. He's too chill. Yeah, I don't think Haggerty can pull off coot. Yeah. <laughs> he could be like old old burnout or something. He's <laughs> got real low energy. Yeah. Well, shoot. Missed opportunity, I say. But they drive I was in. hoping he'd be I wanted him to be Paul Bunyan, personally. <laughs> well yeah. Yeah, turn into Paul Bunyan or something, but that got <laughs> dashed pretty quickly. Uh they drive in and Hulk locks the gate behind him while Joe is just in shock at the whole scene. His jaw's on the floor, and I don't know why. <laughs> so Hulk and the it's crew like you run. can open that gate? Yeah. <laughs> I've been I've trapped, trapped up here thing for years. <laughs> So Hoke and the crew arrive at the cabin in the woods and he tells them that this is their last chance to get their shit together to avoid prison. And Sam tells them that she'll be counseling them for the whole week while Hoke puts them through physical challenges. It's like double dare. Double dare. I, <laughs> I was said, thinking the same thing. He sends them to their tents, including Dr. Sam, because he's taken the cabin all to himself. Meanwhile, uh, I'm, I'm so I'm already sick of hoax shit by this point. Like, yeah. he's such a one note, like asshole character. Yeah, trying to do the sort of drill instructor thing. It's just, ugh. and he can't not talk in that drill instructor like yeah. rhythm. <laughs> Even when he's yeah. not drill instructoring and he's just having a conversation with one other person, he's still got he still has to talk like this with every single sentence that he says. <laughs> and it's yeah he's the voice yeah, of the fucking bunch. annoying uh meanwhile in the woods a bear stalking a deer but before it can strike the giant <laughs> quote unquote sneaks up behind it and grabs it by the throat and the bear roars while the deer just kind of looks on like that's what you get bro <laughs> <laughs> it's like man you gotta watch out for them giants and the giant snaps the bear's neck and pulls out his knife and starts to skin it He's a friend to all deers. Did you know that the deer and the bear were listed in the credits? I didn't. What? I didn't look at the credits to this thing. It said, "Okay, in the credits, it said bear, Amos, <laughs> okay. uh, deer, Jane Doe." <sighs> I did. You know, I did see the the deer in there as Jane Doe. I was looking for the who who did the song that went over the credits. But I, yes, I did see that. I was assuming that the the deer and bear stuff was just stock footage, but yeah, apparently no. they hired they hired you know the Amos and Jane. Call. <laughs> <laughs> so back at the camp, the teens sit around a campfire talking about their stories, and Rosa's telling this story, uh, telling the, the, the her story to the group about how she was brought in to testify as a witness to a drive by shooting but she couldn't testify because she was afraid for her daughter who's been taken away from her by the government. So that's why she, she got uh, contempt of court because she wouldn't testify because the government has her daughter. This is I'll, getting a little too coast to coast for me there, Rosa. I can't, I can't put two and two together there. Uh, uh, Zach comes in and he says that he had friends that needed things and what they needed was illegal. So he sold it to them. Well, that's simple enough. Uh, <laughs> they needed the drugs. I had the drugs, so there you go. Uh, bada meanwhile, bada that dude would have been eaten alive on the mean streets or wherever the fuck they are. <laughs> yeah. Drug dealer, this guy does not seem like. Yeah, my dude just came out of the came out of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> He's acting like a hard ass drug dealer. Hey there, fellas! If you need anything illegal, I'm the guy. Look out, it's Mr. Belding. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is Trish, who explains that she was at this bar where a fight broke out, and the cops arrived to handle it, but one of them was staring at her ass, so she punched him. That's reasonable. Yeah, that's smart. Uh, Claire, on the other hand, 
She goes into her story, and she was driving home from a party, a little buzzed, when another car ran a red light and she couldn't stop in time. And it was the other driver's third offense, and he had already hit three other cars before running the light, and robbed a bank, and ate a baby alive, and resurrected Hitler. But this screwy system charged her with drunk driving. Call an Uber. (laughs) Doesn't matter what the other car was doing. You were no. driving drunk, period. Call an Uber. <laughs> oh, I hate all of if them. If there's one thing I want the kids, the children, the <laughs> youth of America to take away from this episode of Garbage Theater, call a fucking Uber. Yes. <laughs> Don't rely on the other driver being Satan himself. No. Because look, <laughs> if you don't, you're going to end up in the woods with Paul Bunyan. <laughs> it's a cautionary tale. Here. It's a direct yes. line to Paul Bunyan. Exactly. Uh, so one degree of Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get Bunyan, son? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they go back and forth with that for a few minutes when Joe Estevez runs out of the woods and ruins the scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He just starts kind of doing Joe Estevez things. Trees grow tall and then trees fall. And uh, what the hell are you talking about? Hope comes out and warns uh, Meeks is his name to get out of there. Uh, he doesn't want to hear, see, or smell him for the next six days. And Meeks says, well, we all got things we want to hide and we all just want to be wanted. This guy's speaking hobo like the guys in street trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's true nothing he says makes <laughs> makes much sense no. that's true so Meeks runs off into the woods and Hoke sends the teens to their tents to get up at 0500 later, the, later in the night in Zach's tent the flap unzips and Trish slips in uh, they get about doing the deed when Sam interrupts them and informs them that they've been they've broken the first rule of camp and if they do it again that they're gone and then Martin wakes up and right next to Zach, revealing that he's been in there the whole time this was going on. <laughs> they've, they've broken the first rule of camp, but they followed the first rule of John's eroticomicon. <laughs> yes. Which is, yes. at the first chance you get, show your tits. Get them out. <laughs> rule one. Get them <laughs> out. <laughs> and that's the only reason for this scene. Yes. <laughs> this they is know, the scene. They know what they're doing. <laughs> this is the scene that can cleanly be cut out and then put on air on sci-fi. Yep. So the next morning, Hoke wakes everyone up for a hike and Hoke wants to bring his gun, but Sam asks him not to. So he doesn't. They start mar- marching and chanting and it's just unimpressive. At this point, I'm like, when are we going to start fighting shit in the woods? It's taken yeah. way too long. Yeah, dude. I'm like, what is this alien over here? <laughs> like, it takes like 40 minutes to get to uh, some axe giant shit. God, what a shitty movie Alien was. <laughs> <laughs> so, cut to Meeks arriving at his cabin. Uh, he moves several pieces around uh, on a chessboard that's set up outside and then yells, you're move into the woods. He moved like eight pieces. That's right. not how you play chess. <laughs> and my dumb ass was trying to analyze it. Like, is there a way to make multiple moves and another person make, is that like some advanced form of chess? And it's not. <laughs> uh, and then who is he playing with? I'm assuming Paul Bunyan. But he's a Paul Bunyan. No, it's not him. <laughs> what? Are you sure? Okay. Do I have? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we find out later that he's basically got the mind of a child. Yeah. So why is he gonna? Well, maybe that's why he's playing chess. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's cheating at playing yeah. against this. Never mind. Simpleton. He's playing Paul Bunyan. No, move on. Yeah. <laughs> so, back on the hike. Hoke stops the group to have lunch. They start plotting to to escape uh, because hiking and eating sandwiches is just too horrible a fate for these teens. Yeah. So we're going <laughs> to risk prison. Be in fucking prison right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Zach wanders off and Martin follows not far behind uh, to try to talk some sense into him. 
They stumble upon the remains of an ox. It's just the skeleton. Zack rips the horn off of the skull for a souvenir. <coughs> uh, it's revealed that there's a grave marker next to the, the ox skeleton laying there. So, back at the group... Was it next to it? It's, like, downwind of it. It looked about 30 <laughs> yards down the hill from it. It was there. <laughs> it was built by a child. I, I still have lots of questions about this grave marker. Like, for example, why is the carcass not buried by it? <laughs> like, right. It's just there's, left out. There's a lot of little common sense things that they leave out of this movie. So I'm sure we'll, we'll cumulate all of them together at the end. But uh, so they they go back to the group and Zach shows off the horn and he says that he's going to make a sweet ass bong out of it, man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so they continue to hike. Uh, cut to Mel's Lumberjack Saloon, where half of what you see on the screen isn't actually there. <laughs> it's just the outside of a building Mel's Lumberjack Saloon is in big letters on the marquee which are clearly superimposed there's a giant lumberjack standing out front statue which clearly isn't there and I think every facet of the lumberjack statue is a separate element like the lumberjack's a piece the beer he's holding is a piece like the whole thing's cobbled together <laughs> some photoshop fucking wizard pulled this off <laughs> so inside we find out that uh the claire's dad that dropped her off is the local sheriff and he's gonna uh he goes he walks into the the bar which is now called shenanigans now that you're inside of it and not <laughs> in fact uh mel's lumberjack saloon i couldn't believe it was actually called shenanigans <laughs> like <laughs> I just keep. I thought about super troopers. <laughs> that means it's probably a real place that we can look up, much like oh, the place is. in 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 Where Rooster. And it's in the credits. Oh, there we go. They got, they got the shenanigans bar. <laughs> Sounds like another phone call needs to be made, Blake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you actually get to meet uh, Paul Bunyan? <laughs> I just, I'm, how much of that lumberjack is actually outside of your establishment? <laughs> you know what? I said I was going to do it last time and I really dropped the ball. I'm calling these bastards tomorrow. <laughs> Get some answers. Yes, I'm going to record it and we'll be able to put it on our next episode or something. I don't know if you can record it. I think that's, that's illegal, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> Recording the other party without them knowing? Depends on the state. To, yeah. What, what state is it in? Plus, it's a business. I'm calling and asking a question. There's nothing legal about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look, you're talking to a professional prank caller here. <laughs> it's the jerky I've been boy's son calls. over here. Yeah. I've been making prank calls since John been shitting yellow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, now y'all have awoken the sleeping giant. The Paul Bunyan, if you will, of prank calls. <laughs> <laughs> His legend will be sung of for decades to come. <laughs> yes. And when people talk to me, they'll be like, he had the mind of a child. <laughs> <laughs> people cheated him at chess all the time. <sighs> Back on track. Uh... <laughs> The sheriff goes into shenanigans and he asked the owner if she had anyone take that first offenders program ever, ever. And she says that, yeah, her niece uh, took it one time and it really helped her out. And he asked about a hoke and the bartender says, that man's crazy. He should be in jail. He killed a kid up there last year by working him to death. And the woman tells him to go and tend to the other customers. And he says that they already got drinks. And they get a shot of some people playing pool. She says, no, the paying customers. And then we see a bunch of people sitting around a table in a house that's definitely not inside of this bar. <laughs> I'm just wondering when John Taffer was going to come in and fix this fucking screw up of a bar. <laughs> Instead of them arguing about it. Yeah. So uh, uh, Mel confronts him. 
and he says that the uh, com- uh, comforts the the sheriff and says, "No, no, no, don't listen to him. Uh, the kid just got heat stroke and he's fine now." Uh, the sheriff goes to leave and she invites him back for a drink later that night. They're gonna try to do this little romance between the sheriff and the the bar owner, and it never goes further than this. That's, That's it. why should it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, back at the camp, the teens are still hiking double time. Uh, the giant arrives at the ox's grave, grave, and he finds that one of the horns is missing from the skull, and he cries out in anguish. Uh, finally, yeah, it's gonna pop off. Finally, we can get to some shit now. <laughs> Meeks comes running out of his cabin with a shotgun, spooked, and uh, the giant stalks the teens as they run through the woods flailing the horn around. Uh, and when we see the Paul Bunyan giant, and this happens a couple of times when you see him from the back, did they superimpose the giant spine onto him, perhaps what to hide like? a massive seam in the costume? I couldn't tell I what was going on. didn't notice it in that one shot. Yeah, I don't know. Did, did the costume rip at some point? If that was the only one know. they had. I don't know. Well, my dumb ass, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, is that thing like cybernetically enhanced? <laughs> is it morphing? I thought like it was like I'm waiting for the Doom guy to come out at any minute. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised that this isn't better. The, uh, the suit isn't better than it is because like, why did it have nipples all over it? <laughs> I don't know what those were supposed to be. I don't know if they were like little horns. Or little spikes? I don't know. But yeah, they look like um, nipples to me. But the uh, the guy that did, or at least the, the creature effects house that did the costume has like a pretty illustrious career. I thought I recognized the name of him. Uh, well, uh, so so the guy, uh, Robert Kurtzman, it's like Robert Kurtzman's creature yes. house or some mess like that. And uh, yeah, they did like From Dusk Till Dawn, um, the, the Haunting of Hill House show. Uh, Doctor Sleep, um, just like tons and tons of stuff. Uh, there's even like a From Dust Till Dawn poster in Shenanigans. <laughs> yes. Um, well, there goes one question. Well, that goes oh, back to the it. old adage of <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the what happened here. What can we? What can we get from you guys with uh, twenty five bucks? <laughs> we got twenty five dollars and this Arby's card. <laughs> <laughs> We got a commemorative mug from Shenanigans. We take and trade, and a coupon to the old timey Texas crab boil. <laughs> uh, that horse is going to be powder by the end of this episode. This episode, <laughs> it's going to be every episode this season. So forget about John being a pervert. We're talking about your asshole for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, as the teens rest, they hear booming footsteps getting closer. The giant appears behind Trish, and he raises his axe up and brings it down and cuts her in half down the center. Uh, Hope reaches for his gun. Oh, was that like a great effect somehow because they use paper mache in an incredible <laughs> way? No, it is stupid. <laughs> Just happy to have the gore, honestly. Yes. At least they showed it. So when they shouldn't have. (laughs) Oak reaches for his gun, but it's not there. So he tells them all to run. They start running from uh, the giant as he's swinging his axe at him, running behind him. A branch knocks down Rosa, but the giant zeroes in on Claire. Uh, Zach and Martin run and help Rosa up. The giant cuts off Hoke. Uh, Sam and Claire, he swings his axe, chops Hoke in half across the middle. He screams at Sam to get the kids off the mountain, and he's just laying there with his guts hanging out, just half of him, and he's screaming at the giant, just uh, goading him on, and then the giant comes up and steps on him and pops up like a water balloon. (laughs) Got him. (laughs) Yeah. So, thank God he's out of the way. Uh, The others all regroup and make it back to the camp. They plan to take the van, but Hoke has the keys. But Martin, remember, he's a top hacker. He can hotwire it. So, oh, I, I shit to say about this. 
So they task Claire with finding some weapons they can use, and they all watch out the windows for the giant. Sam gets Hoke's gun out of the drawer. Sam and Martin head to the van. Martin's got a big pitchfork. Uh, Martin gets in the van and gets to work hot wiring. Okay. Okay. For many years, <laughs> many of my flunky years, I worked in a car stereo shop. I know all about car, car wiring systems. And yeah, it's possible to hotwire a car. Not a car that new, but it's possible to hotwire cars. <laughs> but you need tools. This bastard's just rubbing wires with his thumbs. I don't know how he cut the wires. I don't know how he skinned the wires to expose the the, the actual metal. He I don't has, know how he did any of this. He has a wooden pitchfork, Blake. You know what? You're right. Slippery <laughs> bastards, they figured it out again. <laughs> But at one point, he just rubs the wire with his thumb. And I think it sparked. You got to charge it up. <laughs> you got to get that static going. You know what? I can't really say shit because I got a computer that I blow into when it works for some reason. You got to so. charge the computer with <laughs> air power. <laughs> Technology is mysterious. Yeah, it's it's all fucking black magic. Nobody knows how it works. No. <laughs> I, pl- I plug my laptop into the six demon bag and all of a sudden I get the internet. <laughs> oh, my audio's going out. Time to use wind, fire, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it starts out small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Martin can't get it going and Sam makes the call that we got to go back to the cabin. Taking too much time. Uh, Zach spots the giant outside as it grabs the van and drags it off into the woods. So back at the giant's lair, he takes a load off and cleans the blood off of his axe. Back at the cabin, Claire patches up Zack's hand because he cut himself because he's just so brooding and hardcore that way. He's just standing there like squeezing a knife. Squeezing a knife. Because he's just so stupid. I know it's it's a a fight and shit in the woods movie, but you're not a buff Indian. (laughs) (laughs) so uh meeks comes scrambling up to the cabin and starts pounding on the door and wanting to get let in he comes in and he starts accusing the youngins of all causing this he says that he's never seen the giant so riled up and they show him the horn and he says that this is very very bad and meeks settles everyone down for the tale of old captain larch bunyan the lumber baron (laughs) No, when old, the old when old meepers or whatever starts telling the story, it's like it's, <laughs> it's like he's him, just making it up. Did you call him meepers? <laughs> whatever his fucking name is, <laughs> but he's like uh, it starts with uh, Captain Large, and he goes <laughs> Large <Yeah>. Bunyan. <laughs> yeah, Captain Large Bunyan, the lumber baron. And he tells about how he married this woman, Helga, and she gave birth to a giant baby. A bodacious baby. (laughs) The the baby had a disease that's going to make him twice as big as a man, live three times as longer, but forever have the mind of a child. And he tells about (coughs) Dan Haggerty coming in and clearing the trees and food's getting scarce. Uh, so they track down Babe, the big blue ox, who's actually friggin' blue, and they shot him dead. Or they, they, okay. Why, uh, Why explain, is it deformed? Explain Babe, the blue ox. Explain it. They goddamn Emperor Palpatine, Blade. He can't just be there. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's no explanation for it, and for some reason it's disfigured. <laughs> yes, it's like a mutant. Yeah, so are we to believe... That also there was an ox born with some rare disease <laughs> that, that gave it the big. mind of a child and shit. <laughs> the mind of a child <laughs> ox? A calf? The mind of a calf. It was big and blue and had a droopy eye. What the fuck was wrong with its eye? <laughs> I don't know. Why was its eye like that? We need this to make it like... more endearing to audiences. I, I, I guess we're just supposed to just assume it's a mutant ox. Oh my god. I gotta make a gif of this uh this cut to <laughs> Haggerty's face. 
where like Babe turns and flashes his messed up eye and like roars. <laughs> and there's a music sting, and then it cuts back to Haggerty, who appears to have been given the direction, look like nothing is happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's super funny to me. <laughs> it was like they told him, okay, now we want you to react as if a giant monster ox is bearing down on you. But Dan Haggerty has no imagination, so he could only see the tennis ball on the stick. <laughs> So, uh, Dan Haggerty shoots, uh, yeah, uh, Babe charges, Dan Haggerty shoots him deader than a dinosaur. Uh, they, Dan says, oh, we're going to eat good tonight. And Bunyan tracks him down and he gets to the camp where they're all eating Babe. <laughs> it pans over to see Babe's big dumb head laying on the side of the fucking camp. <laughs> But they were eating Babe as if they were trying to piss off Paul Bunyan. Yeah, they were eating it aggressively and yeah. tauntingly. <laughs> like dangling it over their mouths and like <laughs> flicking their tongues out at it. And stuff. No one eats this way. <laughs> <laughs> and Bunyan's just getting pissed. And by pissed, he's just shaking his head and going, <laughs> Why does he look like this? I, I have, like, so many questions about this He's got back. a disease, John. He's so, The monster disease? He's got toxic Avengeritis. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> so, at this point, he's, what, five years old or something? Yes. yes. He's, okay. Yeah, he's, he's, like, five. And yeah. <laughs> but he's the size of a man. Yeah. Yeah. So, he sees a heating old babe, and he, he manages out a, No! <laughs> It's not a very convincing no. It's just, mm, no. Bunyan goes berserk and slaughters the whole camp. And the townsfolk go and they catch him in the woods and they chain him up and they drag him through town, humiliating him. And, and, and he's even shunned by this woman, Maybell, who he was in love with. What? <laughs> yeah, who... Who couldn't have been anything but grossed out by him. <laughs> <laughs> she, it, it's just the backstory of Paul Bunyan is just so slapdash. And oh yeah, and he was uh, he was in love with this 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 woman. And when they drug him through town, she kind of looked away, and that just added to the craziness. Yeah, I mean, she's like basically an adult, and he's um a child and stuff. So that's weird. Yeah, um, it's a felony. <laughs> So they drag him through town, they throw him in an abandoned mine shaft, and they blow it up, sealing him in forever. But he escaped! Why is this the way they decide to deal with him? Like, cave a mine in on him? Guns don't work? Neck too thick for hanging? <laughs> that was the simplest method. We got that old mine shaft we've been meaning to blow up, so... <laughs> Why not kill two birds with one stone? Uh, but he escaped, of course, by just kind of like climbing out from behind a hill. Uh, he took Babe's remains to the top of the mountain and made a shrine to his only friend. Why was he friends with the ox? They don't explain anything. He got the same disease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just as bad as Rise of Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> so Meeks tells them that they have to return the horn to the grave or they'll never get out of there alive. So Zach grabs the horn and takes off outside. He's doing it right now. Uh, he yells out into the woods for Bunyan to come and take the horn back and he throws it into the woods in spectacular green screen fashion. Uh, now, the guy said you had to return it. <laughs> what a lazy asshole. I'll throw it back from here. It's not that Here, just long. come take it. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm. No, because you can't follow directions is why you're in this boot camp in the first place. <laughs> Get Richard Harrison in here. He knows how to follow goddamn directions. Boy, does he. Give him a sword and a pendant. He'll put him in the fire. That's right. <laughs> Scorpion Thunderbolt. Go watch. Go listen to it. <laughs> uh, so after a beat... The horn comes flying back out of the woods and impales Zack. Bunyan comes stomping out, 
grabs Zach and drags him away. Uh, meanwhile, Joe's in the kitchen uh, making himself a sandwich. And he tells them that <laughs> Zach there, he may have saved all their lives. We need to just let Bunyan settle down and maybe we can get out of here at first light. Uh, Rosa, who's uh, wounded from hitting that branch, is worried about getting to see her daughter again, and Martin's trying to comfort her. Uh, Claire shows Sam how to use a gun because she's the sheriff's daughter, and you learn things when you're the sheriff's daughter. Meanwhile, back at the cave, Bunyan sharpens his axe in the cave. Oh, yeah! (laughs) (laughs) He sharpens his axe and then immediately dulls it. Yeah, he immediately fucks it up by slamming it into the rock wall over and over again. Goddamn kids. <laughs> so the next day, the sheriff gets a call about another bear sighting at Cutter's Peak. So he says, I'll go check it out. I was heading up there anyway. He was going to go check on his daughter. Back at the cabin, Meeks tells Claire that she's the spitting image of Maybell, the woman that broke Bunyan's heart. And that's the reason why Bunyan didn't hurt her when they were running through the woods. How the how the fuck does he know this? <laughs> Bunyan this told him. Was, this was oh, a hundred years ago. <laughs> over this <laughs> shitty chess match. It's the small talk. Uh, Meeks heads out to get the truck so they can escape. Uh, the sheriff finds Hoke's body in the woods and heads up a fire watchtower so he can call for backup. Uh, and the backup comes in on the little CB radio back at Shenanigans, the lumberjack bar. Back at the cabin, all seems quiet until Bunyan smashes through the roof with his axe. He starts hacking away at the cabin and destroying it, uh, and he peeks through the roof, and he reaches in to grab Rosa, and Martin grabs him with his trusty pitchfork. And Bunyan slaps Martin to the ground, grabs Rosa, and pulls her up through the ceiling, and, okay, eh, not a great effect. (laughs) Oh yeah, let's talk about how great uh, visionary this shit was. He might as well. He might as well have been hanging a Barbie doll from his from his hand. <laughs> it was really pretty bad. I got it. Like the stuff of him smashing through the house, though, looked kind of okay. Yeah, it, I mean, like it's it just like, th- these movies where it's just all composited. While like, yeah, everything's real, but nothing's there with it. The, there's no like relationship between any two things yeah when he would bash it like when you see him bashing through the roof it did look good okay i'll give you that but then when he'd reach his hand in the scale was all wrong oh my god he changes this this is the point of the movie where like the special effects go crazy um yeah and he changes size constantly (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so he picks up rosa he inspects her sees that it's not claire and flings her into a tree, killing her. Which I thought was funny. Because <laughs> she fell down a tree like the way Brian falls down the stairs on Family Guy. <laughs> she, she lands with the arm behind her back and exactly. a leg crooked. It was, it, that's exactly what happened to her. So I had to laugh at it. So uh, Sam starts shooting at Bunyan and hits him in the eye, causing him to drop his axe. Martin, enraged by Rosa's death because they've fallen in love for the 10 minutes they've been together, uh, grabs a twig, literally a twig, yes, and chucks it at Bunyan to no effect at all. <laughs> Why did they get rid of the really, gun? It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts, he's screaming at Bunyan that, I'm going to kill you. I'm he's super kill intense you, about it. <laughs> and then grabs the stick. He grabs this little twig and, like, just, eh. <laughs> but why did they get rid of the gun? It didn't seem to be doing anything. Well, they shot him in the eye and he covered his eye for 15 fucking minutes. <laughs> Shoot him in the other one and run. Did she, did she empty the clip? I don't know. Who knows how many shots she fired? I don't know. Who knows? But I don't know. Martin, Martin's pissed. He's gonna, I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to wrestle him to the ground, and he gets a saddle on him, and he becomes, becomes Paul Bunyan Jones. That'd be nice. <laughs> so, uh, so, where was I? So, yeah, he starts screaming that he's going to kill him. Uh, Sam and Claire grab him, and they all run off. Bunyan recovers and traps him up against a tree. 
And just as he's reaching out to grab him, the sheriff arrives and shoots Bunyan a few times, causing him to fall over into the cabin. And Martin's like, yeah, we killed that motherfucker. But then it's revealed that the sheriff was just shooting tranquilizer darts. Why (laughs) is he shooting tranquilizer darts? Because he was after a bear at first. Why are you using (laughs) tranquilizer darts? You realize what a bear is? You can't just go around. <laughs> you know, we're worried about this monster Paul Bunyan in the woods. A bear is a real monster in the woods. But it, it's a fucking monster. Aren't, aren't like the park rangers and also put like you can't harm the bear unless it's harmed a person? Bullshit. It was just sighted. No. That's not I'm, how it is. I'm pretty sure there was an episode of Sopranos where they talked about how they can't hurt the bear. Because that's, it didn't actually do anything. That's that pro teddy bear propaganda that Build a Bear puts out. <laughs> fuck a bear. They are monsters. <laughs> that's Blake's version. Fuck a bear. <laughs> fuck a bear workshop. It's just it's just a gun store. <laughs> <laughs> They're monsters. <laughs> So every yeah. time I hear people talk about uh, saving the fucking <laughs> bears, go watch go watch a bear hunt something. They're one of the last major predators of North America. Yeah, and they're all they're, they're, there's no shortage of them, <laughs> and they eat their babies alive because they're monsters. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. Well, I don't Fuck know why you use a tranquilizer dart on a fucking monster. Fuck a bear workshop. And it just, the whole facade looks exactly like a built a bear. <laughs> it's, and you go well, in have and, all kind of perverts coming in there. It's just gun customization inside. <laughs> yeah, you have that little plastic heart that you kiss and you put it inside the stock of your AR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can make it say stuff. <laughs> like, it's coming right for us. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, he's shooting tranquilizer darts. They won't last long. So they start to run through the woods. and But they get cut off because Meeks jumps out with his shotgun. And he tells them that, you, I can't let you leave. Because Bunyan's just a boy. And they want to take him away from me. Who? Yeah. Right then I thought, is this like is this Larch Bunyan? <laughs> Captain Larch Bunyan himself? He's some kind of eternal or something. Like I, I at this point I'm like, anything could fucking happen. Yeah, maybe he got part of the disease. He got the, the, the living forever part somehow. <laughs> I, I don't know. You, know. you know what? I would have commended this movie for just swinging for the fences at that point. Yeah. Just leaning into the crazy. But you know, also Meeks saying, like, isn't his real name. Nobody names their son Meeks. <laughs> so maybe he was Larch Bunyan. Maybe. Maybe. I'm sorry. Let's show him the respect he deserves. Captain Larch Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can go from an Estevez to a Sheen, you can go from a Bunyan to a Meeks. Yes. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> So, he says he's he says Paul Bunyan's just a boy. I mean, motherfucker's like over a hundred years old. <laughs> yeah, but he's like Yoda. He's like eight now. I bet you Thanksgiving at the Sheen Estevez home. <laughs> <laughs> so what you been up to? Well, I shot this movie. Oh yeah? What part did you play? I was Meek slash Larch Bunyan. <laughs> Oh, really? We finished up the West Wing, so, uh, you know, go fuck yourself and get some gravy. (laughs) Emilio still talking about Mighty Ducks and how he revitalized (laughs) hockey. Charlie Sheen spreading his AIDS everywhere. (laughs) Snorting coke off his AIDS. So, Joe, I... (laughs) Joe, I heard you shot a movie last week. I shot 18 movies last week. (laughs) <laughs> and then Charlie Sheen shows up, I shot a bear <laughs> with a new shotgun <laughs> fuck a bear <laughs> uh, uh, so Martin then springs into stupid action grabbing the barrel of the shotgun and shaking it around 
no, forcing grabbing Reeves the to- barrel of the shotgun and pointing it directly at his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Forcing Meeks to blast him point blank in the stomach. Uh, Meeks keeps the shotgun aimed at the sheriff, though, and he tells Claire that, uh, you know, you ain't not should have shunned Bunyan back in 1894. And <laughs> so now he thinks she is Maybell. And for a second, I thought she was too. <laughs> so, I was like, is she like reincarnated? Uh, I was trying to make this movie work. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna do he something. <laughs> so behind them, you see Bunyan slowly get to his feet, and he sees Meeks pointing the shotgun at Claire. So he picks up his axe and hurls it. It comes swinging in and chops Meeks' head off, and he falls to the ground. Uh, they run back to the sheriff's truck and get in. The sheriff gets some ammo from the glove box and hops in the back. And Claire drives him off. Bunyan gives chase as the cops, as the sheriff opens fire from the back of the truck. Uh, Bunyan starts deflecting the bullets with his axe like a goddamn Jedi. And <laughs> Bunyan, he's, he starts clo- closing in, swinging his axe, and the sheriff's barely dodging it. You'd think if they just drove faster than five miles an hour, they'd get away. Yeah, yeah. there was no urgency there whatsoever. <laughs> and maybe I mean, Bunyan's disease is metachlorians. Yeah, because he he got the hang of deflecting those bullets pretty quick. Uh, yeah, the I sheriff, thought they were. I was I was hoping they were going to do a Jurassic Park thing here. Yeah, <laughs> was like, yeah. Oh, was it like, was Ooh. it was setting it up. But yeah, <laughs> so where's the where's the the side view mirror thing? Didn't happen. Uh, the sheriff dodges one of Bunyan's swings, but loses his rifle in the process. Bunyan somehow. Uh, gets around them and gets in front of them and cuts them off, uh, which runs them off the road. The truck crashes. They all climb out. Bunions disappear. <laughs> I like how the sheriff, sheriff lost his rifle but dark. forgot about his sidearm. Like he had a pistol. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but he needs that for the next scene. Okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to save that. So they take off running, and there's the lake... And there's a little bridge that goes out to the little, like, observation tower deck of a dam thing. I don't know how to describe it. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, (laughs) I don't think they do, Chase. Keep going. (laughs) It's the the concrete pillar thing with the little house on top. A lighthouse? (laughs) A lighthouse. It's got a little building on it. There's a bunch of them at Hoover Dam. We've been to Hoover Dam, John. The little things. Yeah, yeah. A car check? Look, I went to Stephen Baldwin Science School. It's the things. The damn things. The damn things. And there's the thingies and the things over there. Sharks and Venice. You go, this, have, this is just I a big no clip what show. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bridge. You mean like the drawbridge guy? There's a bridge that goes out to a... Con- it doesn't matter. There's a bridge that goes out to a concrete structure that's connected to a dam. Can a car go on it? No. <laughs> <sighs> so they run for this bridge. And as they're getting to it, Bunyan comes over the hillside and leaps... And by leaps, I mean they just kind of slide him across the frame. <laughs> this, this, this got a laugh out of me because the effect is so bad. <laughs> they grabbed him with the mouse and drug him over. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so he closes in. Uh, they can't get the door open to the little structure, so they're pinned against the wall. And just what structure? Hope- oh my, I'm not listening. <laughs> Just when all hope seems lost, <laughs> the local militia show up, complete with some of the cast from the 1894 campsite. Yes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Which They're then all- I started thinking, oh, wait, are all these people in on it? Like, I'm all- still thinking that there's time travel and reincarnation involved. Yeah. Are they all descendants? Are they all immortal? I Who know. the hell knows? <laughs> so... Bunyan turns and charges the militia. They wildly open fire, hitting everything in sight. 
They didn't uh, give a shit about the people at the at the structure. <laughs> no, they had to dive for dear life. <laughs> it's just some group of morons who decide they're a militia. I mean, <laughs> what do you expect? So Bunyan gets riddled with bullets. I can't. I can't front though. I bet it would be a lot of fun to just shoot the fucking shit out of Paul Bunyan. <laughs> oh my god! Are you kidding me? Okay, if <laughs> the, the Cajun in me is really about to come out, but if I was sitting in a bar and somebody said, "Hey, there's a giant." on a bridge that goes to a structure that I can't quite describe right now. <laughs> and we're going to go shoot it. I, I would have been in back of that pickup truck so fucking fast. <laughs> like to go shoot a giant. Yeah. Just on a just mystery lit, structure. Lit. <laughs> where else are you going to find a giant, but on a mystery structure. Like, I would have been so fucking white trash at that point. <laughs> well, they're loving it. I, like, uh, instantly would have, like, gotten a goatee and lost a tooth. <laughs> just knocked a tooth out myself just to yeah. look the part more. Oh, my God. So, they riddle Bunyan with bullets. They hold their fire long enough. For Bunyan to slowly turn around, reach out to Claire and sub, Maybell. And then if he it wouldn't been for the subtitles, I wouldn't have known what he said. No. And then he keels over the railing and falls into the water. In hilarious fashion, he went over the rail. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looked like the goddamn quap runner. From <laughs> I was <laughs> wondering why they stopped shooting. Well, they wanted to give him a chance. I'd have, I'd have been that guy. He's still moving. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the militia cheers as Bunyan sinks into the water and even does the Terminator thing where his hand's like the last thing to go in. Didn't do the thumbs up, though. <laughs> no thumbs up. Uh, uh, the bartender, who is also the leader of the militia, Decides to take Bunyan's axe as a trophy and hang it in front of the bar. And I'm thinking, oh, they're setting up the sequel. You would think. You'd think. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, no. Um, then the sheriff tells Claire that they best get out of there and cue the ballad of Paul Bunyan <laughs> over the credits. <laughs> Sung by Hickory Hawkins. Featuring <laughs> side meat. Hickory and side meat. <laughs> you know, Hickory Hawkins and DJ side meat. Sometimes I feel bad because there's people out there that have real musical talent. And the only gig they get is singing the ballad of Paul Bunyan in a shitty <laughs> Estevez movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my he's, life trying, he's trying to do his best uh, Johnny Cash impression, I guess. Well, what's that? What's that old Peruvian saying? Sometimes your best ain't good enough, kid. And <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's it. That's so, the movie. That's the movie. That's Axe Giant. Good. Yeah. yeah, I'm rather indifferent to this one. Yeah. It wasn't a bad way to start out. It wasn't a bad way to start out, but I don't, I don't think this one's going to make any any lists, any top any things. It's not going to nah. spawn an award or anything. No. No Paul Bunyan award. Sorry. No. Uh, but we do have to do the quiz. First one of the season. Oh my Yay. God. All right. I already so, don't give a shit. For, the, for those of you who might be just tuning in this season... At the end of every episode, we do a five-question quiz. Uh, whoever has the most correct at the end of the season wins the season and moves on to our special month where we compete in a series of four movies. Blah, 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 blah. You probably know. If not, you'll learn. Um, so, let's see. Which ones do I want to do? 
Hmm. Okay. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Question number one. How many acres of woods does Dan say they're going to cut down in the beginning of the movie? Question number two. How many times, including this one, has Dan shit in the woods today? Ooh. Including that one. Okay. Including that one. Okay. All right. I think I got that. Question number three. What does stump stand for? Uh, hold on. I'll put an easy one in there. I'm trying to wait. Oh God! Oh God! What is it? I'm mo- I'm moving on. No! <laughs> Son of a bitch! All right. Oh fuck! God damn it! While they're on their trek through the woods. All of them have blue backpacks, except for one person who has a red one. Who has the red one? Oh, dearie me. Did I mention, folks, that these questions are total bullshit? Huh. And question number five. When the sheriff puts out his backup call on the radio and it cuts to the shenanigans bar, what code is on the CB radio? God oh, damn God it. damn it. I skipped that part. <laughs> At that point, I was hitting 10 seconds pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. Uh, oh, man. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that one. All right. I Pencils think I did okay down. Then. That's down, gentlemen. Let's see how you did. Question number one. How many acres does Dan say they're going to cut down at the beginning of the movie? 20 acres. 60? 20 acres. Uh... Question number two. How many times, including this one, has Dan shit in the woods today? I think it's four. Three? It's three. He says that's the, that's the third time today. See... I knew he said three, but then I thought we were adding one when you said including this one. You slippery bastard. <laughs> including this one. He says, that's the third time I'm, today. I know, I know. I just <laughs> didn't remember it word for word. <laughs> what does stump stand for? Stupid teenagers under my protection. I'd say, yeah, stupid teenagers under my protection. Stupid teenagers under my protection. Nice. Who has the red backpack? Rose? Dr. Sam? Dr. Sam. Oh my gosh. God, total guess. <laughs> and what is the code on the radio in Shenanigans Bar? 325. <laughs> 203. 307750. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well... It's three to two, John in the lead. So I far. Quit. I quit. <laughs> He's still got a long season to go. Lots of twists and turns are coming. <sighs> Let's not get disparaged yet. Yeah. Because, and really, Blake, you should be excited. Because now it's time for coming attractions. And Blake has the, the distinct honor of picking our episode two for season six. For those of you who might not know, Episode 2 has a bit of a history in Garbage Theater. Every season, except last one, John. (laughs) Episode 2 has been especially bad. So, and I think Blake might be cooking up a something. No, I'm actually trying to bring this up a notch. (laughs) All right. Let's have it. What are we watching next? It's a new movie. Okay. It was released uh, in August of 2019, so... It's new. Okay. Uh, it has dinosaurs in it. Okay. So I know you like that. It actually has a kind of a higher score. It has a three out of five. But I went ahead okay. and I said I don't give a shit. Okay. Uh, it is 
Velocipaster. I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah. Because I All saw right. this too. Yeah. Uh, after a devastating family tragedy, a priest travels to China to find deeper spirituality, but instead is endowed with an ancient ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. <laughs> At first, he is horrified by his newfound superpower, but a local prostitute, John, convinces nice. him Thank to you. use his newfound gift to fight evil and ninjas. Oh, boy. Uh, let me go to the one review that I found useful. Albeit no cinematic achievement, the Velocipaster is a hysterically ludicrous horror comedy that knows its absurdity and has no qualms inviting you in. That was a good review. <laughs> <laughs> the bad review, a haphazard mess, no matter how self-aware it is about its own stupidity. All right. So, All right. yeah, that's what we're watching. Now, I saw I saw this on my feed, and I thought this was going to be like in the realm of Kung Fury, where it's deliberately being over the top and crazy. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, I didn't want to look too much into it because they had me at the title, Velocipaster. I was like, fucking right. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty spectacular title. Yeah. So we'll we'll have to see how that one pans out. It could be fantastic. It could, could be. be a nightmare. Who knows? It's episode two. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I do want to make an announcement. Uh, much like our uh, problem riddled uh, episode three for Star Wars, uh, we also have a lot of clamoring for Ghost Shark, which was the third installment of Shark Month that we just wrapped up. Uh, it was also hit with the same exact problems that the Star Wars special was, where my track is just terrible. So, but like the Star Wars track, there's people wanting to hear it. So it's going to go up. I'm going to release it simultaneously with Velocipaster okay. because we don't have the bandwidth to release it now for January. So whenever February rolls over, we'll have a renewed amount of space that we could upload. It'll be put up then. So look for a double episode next time <laughs> for those of you who want to listen to my jarbled mess and if you didn't see the the pro tip is to put it on one and a half times speed right and it makes it a I, little... I haven't tried this what does it does it work i mean does it help it, it's it's still smashed ass but you can understand it a little better okay. a little yeah it's not it's not as aggravating to listen to yeah so it's just I, think, I think you listen to it that fast get your ears ready to have little skips yeah so the little skips don't register as much yeah, so, I guess I don't know. And like, and like I said, we're putting that up. We're putting that up for the diehard fans, <clears throat> just like the Star Wars episode, because you asked for it. Yeah, ravenous uh, diehard fans. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I also want to uh, say that we've also had some interest. Some people have come forth asking about have we ever thought about doing a Patreon, and we have. And we've discussed we've been, we've discussed Patreon as far back as like a year ago, um, but before we start making forward strides into doing a Patreon, we want to hear from you all. We want to hear from our listeners. What would you like out of our Patreon? What perks would you look forward to? What things would actually get you interested in it? So. Like I said, we're still in the very, very beginning phases of even considering to do a Patreon. So we really want to hear from you guys now more than ever. So reach out to us. Let us know. Let us know if you don't even want us to do one. Either way, we just want to hear from you guys. Give us your opinions. Uh, nothing's off the table right now. So reach for the stars, I guess. <laughs> so on... <coughs> excuse me. On that note, now that we're closing out, we want to introduce a new segment to Garbage Theater that we're going to close out every episode with. And over the years of, and I can say that now, over the years, Jesus, of, <laughs> of watching these movies and just ripping them to pieces, there's been times where we've looked back and like, you know, were we a little too mean-spirited on that? Uh, we've even gotten in touch with maybe a director or so who might not have say, who might have not appreciated the episode we did on their <laughs> movie. 
I think it's more YouTube looked back and said, eh, I'm happy with my decisions. <laughs> yeah, like I have a Chase and I have consciences. Uh, conscience yeah. is. Yes. And so I'm, I'm happy with contact and the director. <laughs> oh, we know. We know. So you, you got to have thicker skin than that. <laughs> well, like, it's not I'm, like we stopped doing the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and then he and, and how dare he? Oh, you call your your podcast Go Boss Theater? Man, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you made. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not going to call I ain't going to say which one it was. But god damn, come on. <laughs> Give me shit. This is the he, he wears a beret and sits in a director's chair all the time. <laughs> His, he, at, at the head of the table. So to to make I guess John and and my consciousness feel better, <laughs> we decided we want to add a segment called "If You Can't Say Something Nice." So since we say plenty of bad. It's time we're going to go around the table and say something nice about the movie we just watched so that we can, you know, feel better about the shit that we just poured on it for the last hour and a half. <laughs> so who wants to go first? Any takers? I'll go no? first. No? Let's get Blake go first. <laughs> okay. I'll go first. Uh, <coughs> first off, this exercise was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh <laughs> But I did – it's it's weak, but I did come up with – I'm happy that they tried to – no, I shouldn't say try. I'm, I'm happy – this sucks. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that they came up with a backstory to Paul Bunyan and that it wasn't just here's Paul Bunyan in the woods. So I'm happy that they gave us a reason why he would be in the woods. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Next. <laughs> yeah, they gave him. They gave him. Uh, they gave him. You know, like a a reason to be there. Yes. I, I, I really I, thought I it was going to be like, oh, some kids in the woods. Holy shit! There's Paul Bunyan. Like I thought that's that was going to be it. But they gave yeah. him a backstory. Yeah. Wonderful. I'll I'll tag on to that with mine, where I liked the general concept of turning Paul Bunyan into this monster, where it's like. It's not the the tall tale that you've heard, but it's like this this myth, and he's actually a bad thing. I like the general idea of making a movie out of that, but I wish it was not I, better explained. No, not allowed to say anything bad. Too. I'm saying something nice. I'm saying that you <laughs> can't know, give a I compliment like, sandwich. There's no like, butts and there's no ands. I like the general the general concept of doing a horror movie. And spinning Paul Bunyan into... Stop. That's okay. it. <laughs> Look, you came up with this thing. You're going to play by the goddamn rules. <laughs> oh, man. I know what John's going to say. Uh, the, the titties. Good night, <laughs> folks. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, I like that they... I guess I I was expecting it to be like one of this like a sci-fi movie where there's no gore and they're not there's no nudity they're not going for like the eighties you know all the eighties stuff that I want in a horror movie but I, they they did it so I was I was happy to see the gore um, yes the nudity also <laughs> uh, so yeah that's that's it for me. Well, there you go. So there. Was that so hard? Was it yes. so hard to be nice for a change? I just realized that this is going to be the shittiest part of doing these episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> Saying something nice about a movie. It's hard to stifle myself. Yeah. It would be harder if you had to get me to say something nice about Red Lobster right now. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's still a fresh, fresh wound, you know? Very fresh. Yeah, your, your butt. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Garbage Theater. As always, you can find us online at facebook.com slash garbage theater, 
on Twitter at Garbage underscore theater and on Instagram at Garbage underscore theater. If you'd care to leave us a review on iTunes, we would very much appreciate it. And if you have a movie suggestion or just want to reach out to us, you can contact us on any of our social channels or email us directly at garbagetheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all the latest episodes and happenings. Good night and see you next time, folks. Thank you.